and welcome to my latest tutorial and today we'll be making a maze that's right this is what it's going to look like when we're done hopefully yours looks a little bit different you're not copying mine uh, brick by brick and while you're here please go ahead and like and subscribe and hit the notification bell or whatever it is this year that way you can get notified whenever something amazing happens i know I'm excited too. Now, let's talk about this maze because it's not that easy. It does require some thinking and some patience. So let me walk you through what I did to get here and my finished product. So first thing I did was I ordered some uh, five millimeter ball bearings. Now, if you don't know what those are, those are like little marbles that are made out of metal and they're rather small. And before I created this, in entire thing because I actually did start making a maze and then I asked myself wait a minute am I even sure is it that it's going to go through these little spaces so what I did was I created one of these my little test pilot and so I printed this and I had the little ball go in through here when this space right here is five millimeters this space right here was six millimeters. So the ball went through the first spot and then got stuck on the second part. So I tried it on the, the other part right here where it's five millimeters and it wouldn't go through. So a five millimeter ball bearing will not go through a five millimeter space. Now, theoretically it should work, but what happens when the printer um, starts printing, it adds an extra small amount of plastic at the ends of the, of the print right here or right here. Let me see if I can get a close up. So on the edges of a print, it'll pr print it a little bit thicker and essentially it will no longer be a five millimeter space, five millimeter space in between. So I decided to, with, to go with test number two, right? And <clears throat> with this one, as you can see, it has some holes in it, but I have the ball and this is six millimeter spacing. The ball goes through. Now, unfortunately I left the little holes in there. So it just goes th right through. However, the ball does go through and in my finished product, so you can see the ball goes through with no problem. Okay. So you're going to have to trust me on this. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let me move these things out of the way because they're a little distracting. Did I get everything? I did not. Let's try that again. Control Z to move everything the way it was before. I'm going to move these out of the way over here and let's get started. Now I'm just going to start with the block. Gonna make this 100 by 100. Not too bad. Eh, where'd it go? Right there. 100. I'm gonna enter it on my keyboard and then hit enter. Now the thickness is going to be five. There we go. Not too bad. So here is the part that requires some skill, right? Because the the first time I looked at this thing, I thought, what am I going? to make. I thought it was going to be so easy. Just put, you know, a line here, a line there, and it'll be done. No problem. Wrong. It requires some thinking, some serious thinking. You're creating a puzzle for someone else to solve. If it's just a straight line from here to here, people are going to solve it pretty quickly. So here's what I did. And I'm not ashamed to say it, but I think some of you might consider this cheating and I'm okay with that. I've come to terms with it. I did a little search online for the words black and white maze. And this is what I found online. Let's see, where was it? Oh, is there? Nope. There you go. This is what I found. Now, mind you, if you click on images in your search results, you're going to get a bunch of these, a bunch. Choose one. Now, I, I started with the bottom section here, trying to recreate it down here. Let's see if you can see that in my design over here. Let me move it over here. But, you know, I, ha I have this little curling area here, curls here, and it creates a little bit of an S, but then I, I kind of moved it here. Some. So I started with the basic idea, but then I, I found that it wasn't going to match. It just, I did not have enough space and I'm not sure if you're aware of your printer size, but 
I know in my printers, if they start going over 120 millimeters, the prints start to get a little bit, what's the word? They tend to bend at the end if it's just too long. So I thought 100 should be a safe bet. And when I printed it, it actually came out pretty good. So that's what I recommend with you. Go ahead and find an image. Again, the word, the keywords are black and white maze and search for the images and see what you get. Okay, so I have that there. Luckily, I don't really need this because I have this one here and I can just go off this one. I know, still feels like cheating, but it's cheating that I'm gonna allow you to do. There you go. Okay, so now for the blocks that go in there. Remember earlier I said that um, a space, actually let's use this one here, that the, the ball bearing will go through six millimeters with no problem. So we're gonna use spaces or uh, these holes here to make, uh, make the path for the maze and it's gonna be six millimeters wide. That way we know the ball bearing will go through there with no problem. Now, if you're wondering how to get your own, I, I bought a set of 304. I'm not sure why there's a four in there, but 304 for about $8 at the time of this recording. And I got it through Amazon. I put a link in the in the description below and feel free to click on it and, and get your own if you feel like it. For eight bucks, it wasn't too bad, but it was worth it because at the end, it went smoothly. I knew the exact size I was getting and it made this a lot more fun. So I'm gonna make the height. Let me see if I can get that right there. The height is going to be not 20, it's gonna be 5.1. The reason I'm making it 5.1 is because I wanna be able to still manipulate it when it's in here. I don't want it to be exactly five because then sometimes I'll be, I'll click on this and it'll actually click on the, the background. So I wanted this just a little bit taller than the background. Makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now let's get started. I'm gonna select both of these. I'm gonna click the focus button and then I'm gonna just start in one corner. Now, I am not gonna show you the entire process here. No, that would be super boring. I'm just gonna show you how I get started and how I use some shortcuts to make it easier for you. Okay. So first of all, I want this to be longer. Now look at this. I'm gonna click on this right here. I click on that white corner. I have six and I have 20. I will never change the six. I will only change the other number. I'm gonna make it 25. Hit enter, great. Now here's the, the shortcut. Instead of making a new block, I'm just gonna duplicate what I have here and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. All of these are just gonna be 90 degree turns. Okay, now for the other issue that I had. I want you to look down here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but these two don't align perfectly. So you need to be able to change the snap grid right here. At some points I had it at point 0.1, at other times I turned it off completely. In this case, I just put it at point 0.1, and then I'm gonna check out the distances here. All right, well, that's not bad, but here's what I'm gonna to do to make it just a little bit longer. I'm gonna scoot it over. Now, you see right here that there's a little bit of red in between these two. Uh, that is not a problem now, but try to avoid having any kind of space in between your shapes. Now, if you look carefully, like from up here, it looks perfect, right? But from this angle, there's a little bit of red and you don't want to print this thing without having to do a check later where you hit the, the, you put the ball in and it gets stuck right there. It won't go anywhere. So I'm just gonna move it with the mouse a little bit over there. Okay. So let's, let's keep on going. Don't worry. I'm not going to show you all of it. I'm just going to show you some shortcuts. Now I've done one going up and one going left and right. So, I don't want this to just go straight here, so I'm just gonna duplicate that one. And then I'm gonna hit the shift, hold the shift button and move this over. And I'm gonna keep it right about there. Now I'm gonna, I want this to go over here. So again, I'm gonna duplicate and hit the shift button and go all the way straight. Now I'm gonna go, oops, I'm gonna try to move it up 
straight up. Again, I'm using the shift a lot just because I only want it to go left, right, up, and down. And the shift button allows for that. Now, here's what I'm checking. I'm not sure if you can see this, but right around here, there's a little bit of a difference between the end of this one and the beginning of this one. So I'm going to try to make it a little bit better. And that was a lot of movement. In fact, I don't like it. So I'm going to turn this off completely and move it re uh, uh, clicked it like three times. That looks a lot better. Okay. So I'm going to continue making these things and I'm going to create this huge puzzle and I'm going to let you watch, but it's going to be on super fast motion because hopefully, hopefully your teacher has made you uh, create a maze on paper, or maybe you found a maze online and you're just you know trying to copy it as the best, the best you can, or maybe you're just doing this, uh, you know, just out of your head and you're just like making it up as you're going along, whatever it is, it's going to take some time and that's okay. But, I'm not going to have you go through it. But before I let you go, I'm not sure if you saw this, but in this maze here, it almost looked like there was a letter S, a letter L, a letter E, and it stops here. But I thought, wouldn't it be cool if you could hide somebody's name in here? Maybe your own name. I don't know. Just an idea for those of you that, that this is too easy for you. Why don't you try making it a little more complicated by adding a name in here? All right. So I'll see you guys after I add the rest of these. And I'm not going to finish it completely because I want to show you some things that will, uh, will might get in your way later or ways to improve your current maze. Okay. I'll see you later. All right. Welcome back. Hopefully you have finished your your first level or your your first attempt and now let me show you some things that I found that I needed to adjust in mind so I'm not sure if you you can see this but when I'm looking at a puzzle I'm looking at this area right here and I notice that there is nothing connecting this part to anything else so right away it's a big hint as to where not to go when designing this thing. And I think originally I had this at uh, 25 or something like that. And I thought, no way. It just, it just totally avoids this area completely. So I want to make some connections from here where the answer is. I'm not, I'm not sure if you know this, but the answer is here, right? Right there. So I wanted to create some places where it would be harder for the person to figure out that this is not the right area. So I extended this into this area by clicking here and then adding 30. Now someone could be like, oh, I do see a connection there. And then they come over here. Oh, okay. It's a dead end. So that's something you need to consider. That way it's not that easy. Another thing I did was I duplicated, you know, some of my parts. And then, oops, let's see if I can find that one. And then I connected it here. Why? So that when it's, when the ball is moving over here, the person will be like, oh, look, I'm getting pretty far. I'm coming over here. Now I know this section right here is a dead end. It just takes a while to get there. So very important stuff right there. And then I created one more just because I thought there's too much empty space here. No one's going to actually think that this is where um, the connection is to, to the final answer. And then I duplicated that again and I moved the wrong one again. So, and I put that right there. There you go. That was something I did so that it would make it just a little bit harder. I extended this one so that there would be more options over here. I made these two separate sections into one up here and down here. So somebody would go, oh, I'm going over here. Nope, dead end. Let's go back over here. Oh, look, I'm getting pretty far. And then they're like, nope, none of this really actually helps. So it's kind of like throwing people off, you know, on purpose. That's kind of a big deal there. Okay, so here's the other thing I want you to do. I want you to check this. I'm going to select everything, right, by clicking and dragging. 
there. I've selected everything. Now I'm going to hit the shift button, shift hold, and click on the base. That means now everything except the base is selected. I'm going to group it and I want you to see something. I don't know what happened. Let me try it again. Oh, I know what happened. Let me undo that. And let me get rid of that one. And let's try this again. Is this D? To, okay, now it should be fine. I'm going to do it again. And I got everything. I, I'm selecting everything. I'm going to hit the shift button and hold it there. Now only the empty spaces are connected. And I want you to notice something very important that happens here. Let's see. You can't really tell just yet, but now I'm going to group this part right here with the bottom and then select it. Anything happen? Yes. Check this out. Right there, I'm not sure if you can see the mouse, but right there, one of my blocks didn't actually go all the way up. Oh, here's another one. This block and these two blocks right here did not actually touch each other. So as soon as the ball came over here, it would be blocked. And you'd have to actually manually cut it or print it again. Now this one right here took me about five hours to print. I don't think you want to print five hours and realized you didn't check for the mistakes. You do that now. So let, I'm going to undo this, control Z. And then this group right here is going to be uh, ungrouped. Now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to zoom in. See this space right there? You see that? I'm just going to move it over just a little bit. There, that should be fine. Now, where was the other one? I think it was over here. Let me zoom in over here. Was this it? I don't remember. Are you guys? Oh, it's right there. I can see the little bit of red. I'm going to move that up. It should be fine now. Okay, so we're good. We're good. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to hit shift so I can click on the red. Now the red is done, right? All the way completely out of our, my selection. Now I'm going to group just the empty blocks. Okay, so there they are. It's a group of empty blocks, but here's something I want you to notice. I want to make sure that the bed or the base is all the way down by clicking the letter D. And I'm going to make sure that the spaces are all the way down by clicking the letter D. All right, so we're good here so far. Everything is down at the bottom. Now, let me check the height just to make sure that we're still working with the same numbers here. Okay, clicking away, why isn't it doing anything? Okay, I'm gonna click on the red, click the height, five. Click the height on this one, six. So that letter D should make it go all the way down and I should be able to see it here unless there's two. Let's make that again, 5.1, just like you have it right now. So right now, this is exactly the way it should be. 5.1 and all the way down. All right, so this is what you have right now. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select both of them now, both of them and group. I want you to notice something right here. I added something because I did not want the ball bearing to go through the maze and then go over here and then go out to an empty spot because these things will fall and you'll most likely never see it again. So I created a little indentation at the very end. So this is what I did. I created a sphere. I made it a hole and I changed the dimensions to six by six by six. Okay, now let's see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, that way I don't get any of the dimensions. See, if you don't zoom in, you're gonna be trying to grab this thing and it's just gonna stretch it out. So zoom in and then grab it. Now, here's what you don't want. You don't want this 
empty spot. Oh, I need to make it centered. So let me change it to off. I want it to be over to the right a little bit. I can see that it's right there, just touching that one. And right here, not at all. So I'm going to use the arrow key and move it over a little bit. And that's good. It's centered. Oh, that right there is in the way. So a little tiny dot, no dot over here. Let me try one more arrow key down. That's gone. Perfect. This is centered now. Now here's what I want you to notice. I did not put this all the way down or even halfway. Halfway will make it all the way through and you don't want it all the way through. You just want it enough for it to not move once it gets to its final destination. So you go here. And if you want to leave it a, a little tiny hole, the ball will not go through there with just a little bit. But you do have to group it. Okay. Don't forget to group it. Otherwise, otherwise you'll just have a ball that's just going to go through. Okay. Now for you, if you did this correctly, you will have empty spaces here. What you need to do now, if you have the empty spaces, is create another one of these. This time it's going to be 100 by 100. And this one, one, oops, I put 100, should be one millimeter. One millimeter, one millimeter thick is fine here. And I'm going to align these two. There and there. Okay. Now, make sure that the top of this, let me zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. The top of this one is not being changed at all by the bottom one. You see how the little lines show up? That's not good. So let me change that color to black so you can see when it actually goes through. Black. Okay. Oh, you don't want it to go through. You want it to be just past. Oh, I'm moving the wrong one. And I click the letter D so that I know that this one is touching the ground. This one's going to go up. There. You just want it to be at the very bottom of this. Otherwise, if you put the red one just past the black, then you'll no, no longer have a five millimeter height and the ball might be jumping over it. So make sure you have it, that it's just at the bottom. You see how it looks kind of weird when you move it around? That's because they're perfectly aligned right now. All right, let's make sure everything is good. Very important that before you finish any project that you check from different angles because I've had so many students that didn't do that and ruined a print that took them several hours. Okay, something I'm going to do right here is I'm going to try to get the black one and click the letter D. That didn't do anything. I'm going to click the top and click the letter D. Perfect. That means that it wasn't touching all the way down. So I'm going to do this one more time. And adjust a little bit of space. All right. Now I'm going to select both of them. Ooh, and that ball bearing, by the way, I'm going to group it later. So I'm going to ungroup it now. There, the ball bearings there now. Now that I'm going to select everything, and this will be my final product, I'm going to select everything, group, and that hole shall still be there. So looks like it is. Let's zoom in. Yes, the ball is not going to go through that. And now you've created a maze. And some of you maybe even hid somebody's name or even your own. Now, for my students that are doing this, please, please follow these steps. I want you to add your name down here. Why is it upside down? No idea. Why? Because I have a feeling a lot of people are going to print these things and I'm going to have several people that print a purple maze, but then we don't know who it belongs to. So write your name, uh, Bob. There you go. Hey, Bob, thank you for visiting. We are going to write your name right here. Uh, make it transparent. Let's change the color. Black's kind of hard to see. Change it to white. Perfect. All right. There you go. And then let me zoom in here. Right 
there. Now, perhaps you want to give this as a gift. I don't know. Totally up to you. However, if you wanted to write a whole sentence, maybe even something cheesy like, happy birthday, you are amazing. Get it? Maze? Yes, I know. I know. I've got the jokes here. So up to you, but definitely put your name if you're in my class and you're printing it and the printer's in the classroom because I want to know who this belongs to. All right, so there you go. Don't forget to group these things. That way your name will show up. That would be awesome. And thank you for following on this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Do all those things, please. I appreciate it. Have a good day.